All right, let's go to Senator uh, Ted Cruz. Hello, Senator. How are you, sir? I'm doing terrific, Glenn. How are you doing? Good. I want to talk about uh, your new podcast on this. Every day you're distilling all of the things that uh, you are. But I also want to ask, ask you personally, I can't take this this just relentless going over the same quote unquote facts over and over and over again and the lies what is it like to have to sit there and not say anything and not have any distractions what is this like for you well it it has been pretty relentless you're you're right that the the house democrats their strategy has apparently been to, to just be so redundant to repeat the same things over and over and over again and, and, and to try to, I, I guess, bore the American people to death. It's a strange strategy. I, I've, ne- I've never seen anyone try a case by, by repeating the same point a hundred times and playing the same video clip a hundred times. But it's what they're doing, and, and they've got another day of it. We start today at 1 p.m. again, and, and, and they have another, uh, they have an, another nine hours left of their 24-hour opening argument, so so at least that will be end, done by this evening. Has there been anything that has opened anybody's mind and went, no, wait a minute, hang on, I didn't know that? Well, did they Have they made any good points? I, you know, look, I, I think there have been moments, I will say, Adam Schiff is a talented trial lawyer. Really? Uh, he... he, he <laughs> He has done. He he is effective at walking through information. Now, he at times gets gets condescending and begins lecturing people, and I think that becomes much less effective. Uh, but when he's not on his high horse, um, he, he's he does an effective job of of walking through through various facts. Now, he ignores the other side completely. He ignores the counter arguments, uh, and and I'll tell you, I think yesterday was a very consequential day. Because yesterday, the, the, the House managers effectively threw Joe Biden under the bus. And, and I don't know if they did so intentionally or not, but the reason they did so is they doubled down on what they had started doing on the first day of arguments, which is making the case. Their entire case now is based on the proposition that there is zero evidence that justifies investigating Burisma. Burisma is the Ukrainian natural gas company on whose board Hunter Biden, Joe Biden's son, sat and was paid a million bucks a year. And their whole case now is based on the proposition that 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 it was that there was an investigation into Burisma was a fraud, a sham. It was bogus, that that it was completely without merit. And the only reason anyone might want to wanted to investigate Burisma is because of improper political motives, because Joe Biden would be the president's uh, one of his possible opponents in 2020. Now, as you know, and you've done some great reporting on this, Glenn, that proposition that there's zero evidence to investigate Burisma is utterly and completely absurd. And so I'm looking forward to Saturday when when the president's lawyers will, will begin presenting his case, because what the Democrats have done is they have opened the door to this, and I hope that the, that the president's lawyer will, lawyers will stand up and systematically lay out the case. Glenn, you mentioned I've launched a, a podcast. The podcast is Verdict with Ted Cruz, and what I'm doing is every night when this thing ends, even if it ends at 2 in the morning, I'm heading over to the studio, jumping to the truck, heading to the studio, and recording it that night, typically within the hour. My thoughts, my assessments, about a half hour each night, and last night's podcast that we recorded just after midnight went through systematically. Here is all of the overwhelming evidence of corruption from Burisma that any president not only had the authority to investigate, but the responsibility to yes. investigate. And, and that ultimately is why President Trump's going to be acquitted at the end of this process. So you you made quite a statement the other day. You said, hey, they just opened themselves up for Hunter Biden being a witness. Tell me. Tell me about because you've mentioned it in uh, I think Wednesday's podcast the you yeah. know the Republican secret weapon. Tell me what what you mean by that and how you see this playing out. So 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 the phrase "open the door" it's a, it's a phrase you'll see trial lawyers and, and litigators often make reference to, and what it means is when one side makes an issue contested, makes an Correct. issue important to their case. It opens the door then for the other side to bring in the reputation of that. So when they stand up yesterday, the House managers stood up absurdly and argued for, for about an hour that there's no reason at all to investigate Burisma. 
that opens the door to, well, here are all the reasons. And, and that means they've been arguing Hunter Biden is completely irrelevant to this case. Well, the House managers have now, uh, through, through their arguments, made, made Hunter Biden not only relevant, he was always relevant, but critical now because their case is based on that they built the entire case like a house of cards on the proposition that, 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 that there was no reasonable basis to investigate Burisma, and, and, and that, that's just absurd. So I haven't heard your, uh, your podcast yet on, on Burisma and everything else, but do you tie in the fact that, what was his name, Kolov, Kolosovsky, I can't remember his name, but the, the head guy of Burisma is also the head guy of Pravat Bank, and the money was going through, uh, going through Burisma to Pravat Bank, and then it all disappears. I mean, it's the same guy, and uh, and they're doing an investigation now. Ukrainian, yes, they're, 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 and he's a Ukrainian oligarch who, who who has been investigated as assets seized for money laundering, and Joe Biden was right in the middle of this. And as you right. know, but not enough people across the country know, Joe Biden bragged about. I mean, I mean, was proud of that he threatened to hold up a billion dollars in Ukrainian aid and in, in foreign loan guarantees on, unless and until Ukraine fired the prosecutor that was investigating Burisma, the company that was paying his son a million dollars a year. I well, mean, it, it is. He also, I mean, he also claims that there wasn't an investigation going on at the time, and we have the court documents to show that it was filed, and we also have inside uh, State Department memos where they are they are notifying and saying uh, there's an investigation starting. What should we do? Blah blah blah. I mean, we know they knew there was an investigation going on, and Hunter Biden was one of the targets. When Joe Biden sat down and said, you got to you, you got to you got to fire this corrupt prosecutor. So their their entire case is built on 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 really. I don't know how to say it other than this lies, tr- verifiable lies. That, that is exactly right. You know, last night after I did the show, I tweeted out a timeline. My, my Twitter handles at Ted Cruz. And you can see the timeline if you want to look at one document that just lays out some of the key facts that played out. And, and the timeline is damning. If you want to understand what happened, you just look at the timeline of the key facts, and as everything played out, it, 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 it appears clear on its face that Burisma was paying a million bucks a year to the vice president's son because they wanted to curry favor. They wanted the vice president to help them out, and it sure looks like Joe Biden was, was in on the deal and more than happy oh, yeah. to comply because he delivered everything they wanted. So the um, the thing with the witnesses, uh, John Bolton, what are your thoughts on John Bolton and the whistleblower and Hunter Biden? Any of this going to happen? So I don't know. I, I actually, It's an open question, and it's not clear. The, the way it's going to play out, House managers have another day of opening arguments today. The president's lawyers have up to three days. They have Saturday. They have Monday. They have Tuesday if they can, if they want to take it. I don't know that they'll take all three days. We then move into questions from senators, 16 hours of questions from senators. We don't ask them directly. Instead, we write them out, and the chief justice asks them for us. At that point, there is a scheduled vote, and, and the Senate will vote on whether or not it is in order to subpoena and call additional witnesses and additional documents. If 51 senators say no, no, that we've got plenty, we've got all we need to decide this, then it's over. Then we'll move directly to final judgment. We'll vote, and, and the president will be acquitted because the House managers haven't proven their case and they haven't met the constitutional standards for high crimes and misdemeanors. Okay, so, Ted, let me ask, you, let me ask yeah. you this, because there's two trials going on, and I want you to take off your lawyer hat for a second and, and even your political hat. Um, you know, the president, if he is uh, if he is indeed um, not guilty, which I believe he's not and and he should not be removed when you've won the case, lawyers should sit down and not. Well, let's roll the dice. It, you've won the case. Close it. However, there's another trial going on, and that is this. I sat down with Stu, and I was I was going over yesterday's um, uh, impeachment hearing, and I I said to Stu, 
I have no faith. If this is what this government can do to the president of the United States and get away with it, what even if he is even if he is voted to remain in office, I don't have any trust in our judicial system. I have no trust in our system. How can you make sure that the American people see it as a fair trial um, and and do enough to hear from people that on both sides are like, well, I wouldn't mind hearing from that person without torching the other side, which is the legal side of, hey, what? Why open any doors? He's won. Well, I think the Senate has already done much, much better than the House and in, in that the House did a one sided partisan show trial. They would own they only allowed witnesses for the prosecution. They would not allow the White House to call witnesses. They wouldn't allow the White House to cross examine evidence. It was, an, it, was, it was a kangaroo court. It was it was only prosecution witnesses allowed. The Senate has already done much better. We're in the middle of giving giving the House managers 24 hours to pre- fully present their case, to argue it, to argue it ad nauseum. They've now argued it a thousand different ways to Sunday. We're going to give the president that same opportunity, the first opportunity the president has had to, to argue his case. We're respecting due process, and we're, we're holding a fair trial, as is our constitutional responsibility. Uh, I hope what happens is I hope the president's lawyers do an effective job making this case, laying out the defense. I, I pulled the president's lawyers aside last night and urged them that they need to systematically walk through less of the process, but the substance. Make the case why the president is innocent, and I think Burisma is front and center. And so, so, so what I walked through on the podcast last night of the, of the evidence uh, of corruption at Burisma, I, I encourage them walk walk through that. Play the clips. Play the clip of Joe Biden bragging uh, about mm-hmm. forcing Ukraine, pressuring Ukraine to fire the prosecutor. He admits it out of his own mouth. You don't. You don't have to. To, uh, infer that he did that. He admits that. Um, make that case. And, and, and once that case is made, their one or two paths will go down. If 51 senators say, you know what, we've got enough to decide that, then it's fine. And you're right. Once you've won your case, you don't need to do any more. Um, so I'm perfectly fine with that outcome of saying we've got enough. Let's move to judgment. Let's vote not guilty and acquit the president. On the other hand, I, look, I can't control how the other 99 senators vote. 47 senators, all of the Democrats, will vote for more witnesses because they want a fishing expedition because sure. they know they haven't proven their case. It is at least possible that four Republicans will join them. There are several Republicans that have talked about joining them. The case that I've made to, to the other Republican senators is I've said, listen, if we go down the road of witnesses – then at a minimum, we can't be unfair and partisan like the House was. We need to respect the principle of reciprocity. That means if the prosecution gets a witness, the defense gets a witness. So if the prosecution gets John Bolton, then the defense gets Hunter Biden. And, and, and I think there is widespread agreement among the Republican conference that, that, that we will do that, which means it's either over next week with final judgment and acquittal or – this thing is going on for potentially weeks or months, but we're going to get be even handed, which means we'll get to hear from these defense witnesses that the House Democrats wouldn't allow to testify. Senator Ted Cruz, uh, you can follow him at <clears throat> Senator Ted Cruz, and I have uh, verdictpodcast.com, but that's different than what you said. Um, what is the verdict, verdictpodcast.com? Is it? You can, okay. you can download it on. On, on Apple Podcasts, you can you can subscribe and, okay. and put five stars. And I tell you, Glenn, it's a little crazy. We launch, launched it three days ago, and it's already become one of the, the, the top ten podcasts in the world. Great. And so 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 it, it, it's nice to see that people are paying attention looking for substance, which which you put out every day as well, and that's yeah. why your listeners. Keep coming back. Thank you very much, Ted. I appreciate it. It's verdictpodcast.com. He records it right after the uh, trial ends every night in the middle of the night. Verdictpodcast.com runs 30 minutes. Well worth your time. Thank you so much, uh, Ted.